Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. You know, I've been doing some thinking and a lot of it comes from replying to your comments and your questions and trying to help out the community as much as I can when it comes to giving you context or information, especially around the videos that I make, including the ones with my GMC Sierra AT4. So what I thought I would do, because people join the channel at different stages, they might have joined last month, they could have joined three years ago, but because of the differences of when they joined, they don't necessarily know what we've done to the truck. So I'm not gonna go through everything, that's not the point of today's video, but I thought I could at least highlight about 10 affordable mods that we've done to the GMC Sierra AT4. Let's go. Okay, before we get started, let me preface this with reminding everybody that the mods that you're about to see, most of them are universal, not all of them, but many of them you can find versions, sometimes even the exact same part number that will work on really any vehicle or truck or whatever you're looking to customize. So you don't have to have a GMC Sierra AT4 from 2021, like my truck happens to be. So I'll leave links to everything in the video description below. You can check that out. I have links to pretty much everything I've done videos on. If you can't find something, just hit me up. I'll try to answer you as soon as I possibly can. But first, let's start with Under the Hood. So the first mod, and I actually enjoyed making this video, is this guy right here. It's worth a whopping $15 US approximately. Prices fluctuate. I ran the wire down here. The 3M adhesive tape on the back has held up in the heat. It's on there really, really good. The only weak link is the switch that comes with it. I could already replace this one here. It's a little finicky. Sometimes I gotta wiggle it to make it stay on, but It'll sometimes stay on just like that. So I'm gonna have to replace that again. I know I could use a dielectric grease or do a different switch setup altogether, but I'm so busy. I've just been waiting till these ones fail and been replacing them. But these here are less than $10. And this whole setup with a switch to get you started is $15. So there's a cheap affordable mod that this truck for the price that you pay for these things did not come with. All right, so the next mod is this one right here. This is a bullet antenna. This one's made by Ronin. I really like this antenna, especially for the looks. For picking up FM radio, seems to be fine around the city. I can get about half hour outside of the city. Various geographies will vary. It's pretty flat here where I live. I pick up FM radio, no problem. The only downside with this antenna is if I have to stand on the wheel or the step or a combination of both to get up here and maybe clean the window up there or you know tend to something, this could definitely penetrate your abdomen. So just be careful. It's uh, not super sharp, but it's not a good feeling when you're resting your stomach on that. So great mod, only $35, but I would do that over and over again with every truck that I own. Now, before I continue, this could be a 20 or 30 item list, but I have to stop somewhere. I wanna keep the video reasonably short and to the point, but I also wanna give you a little bit of an explanation on what I like or don't like about the mods that I'm gonna show you, these affordable mods. There's gonna be a few things that are over the $100 mark, but I've got a lot of other things that we're not gonna cover in today's video, so maybe I'll have to make a part two. If that interests you, leave comments uh, at the end of this video and let me know. But we've got spacers as an example that are affordable on this truck. I could talk about those, um, but I also have some videos dedicated to those. So there's a lot of items done to this truck. For those of you that have seen them all, you know we pretty much lost count at this point, but I will focus on about 10 on this video. And again, if you want to see more because you like this list, let me know and I'll just keep running with it and make you another video. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so let's hop in the truck. How about we unlock it first? So let's hop in the truck here and have a look at a couple affordable mods. So in here, we have a organization tray. It's this guy right here. No, I didn't clean my truck for you in advance. If you were to buy this truck brand new, which I did, there is no tray in here. If you collect buttons, as one might, or marbles, or anything for that matter, and you were to throw it in here, you'd get all disorganized. So I recommend this tray, $20, holds a ton of stuff. I got a ton of stuff in mind as an example, 20 bucks, simple. So let's draw your attention to these screens. I've got plastic right here in front of those screens and I've got the plastic screen right here. I have a product from Screen Protec. It is a screen saver or a protective layer if you will. I've got the high gloss version, so it still has a reflection to it, but you can get a matte finish that doesn't have a reflection or a minimal reflection. I have install videos on all of these things. They do vary in price, but they also have another product, which are some overlays you can put on these pillars so they no longer have 
swirl marks and they're protected. They're not damaging anything. If you look at some of the other plastic, you end up getting all these swirl marks in them and you can't really get rid of them. If you have swirl marks already on your pillars here and you add this product from Screen Protect, which is essentially paint protection film, it will actually hide those swirl marks. So I got videos on that. I'll leave links to the videos and the products in my video description. So it'll be quite a bit there to look at, but the prices do vary on these things, but for under $100, you could look at getting set up on some of these things, whatever works for you. Now you may remember this product here called Hyperdip. I use this Shadow Black because it was brand new to the market. It is the improved version of Plasti Dip, specifically for automotive applications. It gives you a better finish. Where Plasti Dip might look something more like this powder coated metal here. When you use the Hyper Dip, it usually gives it a much better, less orange peely finish. So this is Shadow Black Hyper Dip here on the black letters. I haven't touched this in three years. And more recently, when I put this green wrap on, I ended up doing the bronze uh, hyper dip. You can see I got some right there. And then I put the bronze on those number fours to just give the truck a little different look. I also put hyper dip on the tow hooks. This is all temporary, I can take it off. I put hyper dip here. But the biggest hyper dip project that I did for this vehicle was before I put these wheels on. The first set of wheels that came with it, and I'll take you over there behind my table saw here. These wheels were hyper dipped. They are the factory 18 inch wheels with my Dura tracks on them. So that's them right there. Other than the layer of dust, they are immaculate. Looking really good. I know not everyone's a fan of using hyper dip or plasti dip on wheels, but sometimes you just don't have the budget to go and buy, you know, $2,000 worth of rims or more, and you just want to make your wheels look custom. And you can do a good job for really one can per wheel can get the job done. So cans run about $20 US. If you live in Canada like I do, importing this makes it worth like $30 a can. So it's a bit of a headache or a nuisance, but either way, it's an affordable mod, and if you know what you're doing, you can get a pretty good result. I will mention if you're gonna do your emblems, one can should take care of the front emblem, the two sides on the door, the lettering right here, which I also did in bronze. I did black on the outside, bronze on the inside, and the AT4 logo down there. One can can do all of that, so one can can. Now the next mod is this grill overlay. If you have an AT4 or an SLT, there's an overlay that you can put on from the 2019 and the 2020 two and a halfs. You can put this overlay on there and you can give your grill a custom look and it allows you to add things like lighting quite easily, just as an example. So I was a big fan. The first one I did was white and I actually still have it. If you look way up here in the rafters, there is a white one there because I had a black one, I painted it white and then I got another one in all black so I could change the look and just swap it out whenever I wanted to because this truck is a white truck but I like the black grill, so it's been staying on there pretty much full time. But that's a mod for $180 that I think was well worth it. All right, so the next mod that I have, and it's only $20, is I have something called the Cargo Light Reverse Mod by Boost Auto Parts. And what it does is anytime your reverse lights come on, so when you put it in reverse, it will actually turn on all your cargo lighting. So it'll turn on the two lights that are in the corners of the bed here, It'll also turn on the cargo light up here, and it has nothing to do with pushing the cargo switch on or off in the vehicle. Just having this turn on will trigger everything else. Well, when it's dark enough, and what I've done here is I put a glove over top of my ambient light sensor. You can see there's a glove right there. Right now my truck thinks it's dark out, so if I hit unlock, just like when you back up, these lights would come on. Well, in doing that, it's turned on everything. My light bar, it's turned on this light right here. It's turned on the cargo light up there. It's turned on the cargo lights back here, but it's also turned on my bed lighting. So I've got a strip there, just above that shovel. I got a strip here, so this is all illuminated. I used to have a strip there before I got this box cover, but I decided to just go with two strips because with the box cover there, that light would have been blocked and it just would have cast straight down. So I didn't really need it. But there's another reason why you might only want a two strip versus three strip, but there is a solution if you run into problems. So let me explain that next. So this is a relay, 12 volt, 30 amps, 
This is a five pin, you can get away with a four pin, really doesn't matter for this application. Right now I don't have a relay installed for the bed lighting. Let me just turn it on again. There's the bed lighting. If you run into a situation where this flickers and then shuts off, that happened to me when I had a three strip. When I tied into this circuit here, it just did not have enough power to share with these lights or with the three strip. So they would blink and it would all shut off. If you run into that problem, you add a relay. I'm lucky though with the two strip, it seems to be holding on. But if I installed a three strip on here, it would blink and shut off. And that just means it doesn't get enough power. So with the relay, it's a simple premise. This is going to be hooked up directly to the battery with positive and negative. There's lots of diagrams online, including my first video where I put a three strip in with a relay. This hooks up to the battery. So now you got the power of the battery going through this little module, but you need something to turn it on and off and deliver that power from the battery direct to whatever you're trying to power. In this case, your bed lights. So by adding this eight to $10 item, they're worth like a quarter if you buy them in bulk. But if you had to buy one, you know, eight to $10 typically on Amazon, you just wire it up by hooking it up to the battery and then you take the ground and ground it. And then you take the wire that powers this light here and you hook it up to the correct tab on the back here. And then every time this turns on, it will move a little switch mechanism inside here, which will then give all the power to the light that you're hooking up. So very easy to wire up. I'm not gonna go through that in this video. I have it in one of my previous videos where we do the three strip LEDs in the box. But if you do run into problems with a two strip or a three strip, pick yourself up a relay like this, some extra wiring, cause you do need to get to the battery. Bed lighting, 25 to $33 plus eight to $10 for a relay. And then of course the boost auto mod, which when you hit unlock, it'll turn on all of your lighting. So that brings me to the lighting that's actually on inside this inner tailgate. There's a step in here with some extra lights. So we'll have a look at that next. Okay, so for the last two, I have to open the garage because I don't have enough room to show you. So we are going to open the garage here. And we're gonna do this outside and it's negative temperatures right now, which in Canada, that means freezing. Oh, there's the C8. Yes, I winter drove the C8 today. That's uh, a little lake in front of our property. We definitely have quite a bit of melting to still do. Not quite there yet. This winter wrap's gonna come off. I have a completely new thing planned. Not as crazy as this. Winter wheels will come off. It'll look a lot different. But let's take a look at these steps. So I've got some step lights in here. As you can see, they're not illuminated right now. But remember, I've got this mod. So there's my steps. And these are far cheaper than the ones available from GM. Are they lower quality? Yes. Are they brighter? Actually, substantially brighter. And the price on these, $44. And that brings me to the last item back here, which is this tailgate seal kit. Goes all the way around. Now I had some snow on my box. That's where that water's from. So when I opened this earlier, it uh, fell in. So it's not anything to do with the tailgate, but you can see there's seals everywhere here from effectiveness from zero with no seal kit, which would be a zero to a hundred. I'd say it's about an 85, 90. If you spray water with force, it will bend the seal a little bit in some spots and probably let some water in, especially like up in this area. But honestly, the box stays pretty much bone dry unless I'm washing the truck and I'm using a jet stream inside there. All right, so that is my list of affordable mods. Again, this could be 20 or 25 different items, but we'll start with the first 10. That's my list. That's some things that I would definitely do over again with whatever truck I end up getting next, provided they have similar things available, of course. But if you like that list and you're curious to know more because you just don't know where to go back into the catalog of all the videos that I put out, there's almost 500 of them now. But if you don't know where to go back and find some of these things, I'm happy to make another video, maybe with another 10 items. They won't be all as affordable as these. These are probably the ones that are the most affordable or the cheapest that are not gonna break the bank, but they will get incrementally more expensive from there. Just warning you, so don't hate me. That's just the way it is. A lot of you joke around and say that I cost you too much money. Maybe that's true, but I'm not telling you to buy anything. I'm just showing you what's out there and maybe how you could install it yourself. Anyway, we're getting this video right here, but if you liked it, please hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. 
and we'll talk to you next time.